Hi everyone, you might be wondering what I'm doing with this fancy equipment. Well, as well as showing you this, I'm also going to tell you what you could be asked about on your exam in relation to this. So make sure you watch the whole video so you don't miss out any important exam tips. So let me talk you through what we've got here. I've got a burette filled with hydrochloric acid and I've actually filled it to exactly the zero mark up at the top and that measures all the way down to 50 centimetres cubed. At the bottom here I've got a small beaker with some alkali in, I've got some sodium hydroxide. Now I could look at the pH using universal indicator but that would only give me a measurement to the nearest whole number. So if I put some universal indicator in now it would go probably purple and tell me it's pH 13. But instead I've got this pH probe and this gives me a digital readout of the actual pH. So at the moment it's showing a pH of 13.22. So we say this has got a higher resolution. It can detect much smaller measurements. And we're going to need that because what I'm doing is checking what the pH does, how it changes during neutralization. So I'm going to start with my alkali in the beaker and gradually add more and more acid to it and see what happens to the pH. So I would take my first reading, 13.22, without any acid added, and then I would just add in one centimetre cubed of the acid, give it a stir, let it settle, write down the next pH number, then I would add another centimetre cubed of acid, write down what the pH changes to. And we'll do that progressively until I've added 30 or 40 centimetres cubed of acid, and then we'll see what the results look like. These are a typical set of results that you would get when you're tracking the pH during a neutralization reaction. You can see at the start the pH doesn't change very much at all. So you can see why we needed the pH probe with the high resolution because it was only changing from 13.55 to 13.45. So if we just got universal indicator paper that wouldn't show up that type of small change. So to start with, there's not very much change at all in the pH, but then as you get nearer the point of neutralization, when you get towards 13, 14, 15 centimeters cubed of acid added, then there's a much more dramatic change in the pH. When you plot these results, you can see a very distinctive shape to the pH curve. To start with, as acid is added, the pH only starts to creep down very slowly. And then either side of the point of neutralization, the pH dramatically changes. And then once neutralization has occurred, the pH levels off again. So what could you be asked on an exam? Well, first of all, you could be asked how to obtain a pH curve like this and you would describe the experiment I've just showed you in the video. Or you could also get a question like this. What volume of acid was needed to neutralize the alkali? So first of all, you need to remember that pH seven is neutral. So with a pencil and ruler, you would draw on the graph in your exam, a line from pH seven until it hits the pH curve. And then you would draw another line again with the ruler down from that point and in this case, it looks like 14.5 centimetres cubed. You could also be asked a similar question like this one. What was the pH after nine centimetres cubed of acid had been added? This time we need to draw up from the x-axis. So we find nine on the x-axis, draw a line with the ruler up until it hits the pH curve and then draw across to read off the pH. Now I've just estimated for this one about 13.2. It would be much easier in your exam because you'd have proper graph paper and you'd be expected to read off to the nearest tiny square. This one is a much trickier question. So the question tells you 25 centimeters cubed of acid was placed in a flask and an alkali was gradually added to it. Sketch the shape of the pH curve you would get and then mark on it the point of neutralization. So because we're starting with an acid, it's going to be a low pH. So I've decided it's a strong acid and I'm starting off between pH one and two. And as the alkali is added, it's only creeps up to start with. Then around neutralization, 
the pH shoots up, there's a dramatic change, and then it levels off once again. So they wouldn't be expecting you to put any numbers on this, it's just the general shape that you would need to be able to draw. And in terms of where neutralization happens, once again, you would draw across from pH 7 with your ruler, and then you can mark on where neutralization is occurring. If you found the video useful, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.